top of the morning to you and now it's another day for another tutorial and this one I'm gonna be talking about how to optimize render settings so you're not waiting days for your render to finish in view now everybody knows and they're in the 3d scene that view doesn't have the fastest and most efficient renderer it's an excellent renderer does a really good job but it's slow and it's clunky and there's different ways you can go about making it so it's not slow and clunky one of the easiest ways to start doing it with of course um, is when you create a terrain especially a procedural terrain like what I have right now say I don't need all this detail the best thing you can do the speed up renders is for terrains that are in the distance that don't require a lot of detail is to create your scene go into the procedural editor or the function editor right here sorry and inside every fractal pretty much every fractal let's go to terrain fractal that's what most people would be using anyways um, just to make more sense here what you want to do in a procedural terrain is raise the smallest feature and you'll see what this does it's kind of a little bit harder to see right now because of the resolution that we have it set at but if we raise the resolution to a higher one here about like that and uh, we take this back down you can see how all the the smallest features in here like the peaks of the mountains or maybe just even the little tiny granules right here if you raise the smallest feature um, those basically go away as you can see and there's not as much detail um, that's a good way to start off um, with your trains in the background. So say we have this procedural train. We create how it wants how we want it to look. Everything's good. And we just want to put it in the back. Well, obviously it's not going to look that great up here close up because we have all those small features off or we have it down. So we would take this and put it in the back like that. Maybe that's too far. Maybe closer like right there and when we render let's render it to screen and you can see how the terrain still keeps its shape but there's not all those small details and it was much faster render so that's one step that you can start doing when you have mountains and other things in the distance is to just raise the smallest feature in it and um, that'll take away those small details and then view doesn't have to render them out Another thing you can try doing is for terrains up close, instead of using a procedural terrain, use a standard terrain. And standard terrains are very helpful. I mean, I'm going to bring this right up here, and standard terrains aren't the best looking, of course. I mean, they're standard terrains. There's like no detail in them at all. What you could try doing, um, hold on a second. Sorry about that. Anyways, what you can try doing is let's take this and put it over here so we can see um, what you could try doing inside the terrain itself is to go inside the editor for it um, and if you want more detail in your standard terrain up close what you should really do is raise the resolution now here's the weird thing about standard trains you can flatten it out like this and then you can raise the resolution but say we raise the resolution to 2048 by 2048. Look what happens when we render out another terrain. It'll just take a minute here for it to go through. You can kind of see how it's really, really noisy and um, it doesn't really look the best with the high resolution in the standard terrains. So what you want to do is make it new bring this back down to 2056 and then load in what you want and then raise the resolution um, of course depending on the terrain you chose you're not gonna get much detail this is supposed to be clumpy and it's not going to have the best detail so let's find one that would otherwise look 
better, and that'd probably be a uh, mountain right here. And see how it gets all the little details in there. And of course, these details are still not realistic. Um, but the standard trains do have their uh, they they do have their purpose, and that's for simple reasons as to create a mountain right here. And holy, see, you know, there's another example. And yeah, you're not gonna get much. You're not gonna get very good details in there unless you somehow mold it into what you want it like this. And this could take forever. So don't worry about that. Uh, let's just keep it as 256 loading the mountain and then right here you can see how it's going to be much faster the mold uh, the molding is going to be easier it's going to it's not going to take as long and you don't have a lot of little noise details that would make the render almost unrealistic but yes use standard trains for close scenes unless you plan on having the camera close to your terrain and you want that detail then use a procedural train um, but if you're making a scene like maybe this this terrain will hold plants like this we will go ahead and raise this up slightly and then bring it down like this and it's really good it's really cool to um, it makes your scenes a lot better if you actually don't completely flatten the land that way the trees take on their own um, uh, uniform when um, they're placed on the train then what you can do is then load up another train like this see how we're just using standard trains for close scenes we're not using procedural trains uh, we can actually rotate this in like this and then drop this down slightly and now we can have trees growing up on that one too and it's not going to take as long to render. You can watch this. Um, let me go ahead and render the screen. This is just going to be preview. It it takes like nothing to render out these standard trains. And then if you had a procedural train, it would take a lot longer. It has to calculate all that detail. Even if you bring up the smallest feature on the procedural train, it's still going to have to calculate the detail that is visible by the camera. So the standard train is really good to use when you're placing it with uh, ecosystems or um, you're trying to shape up a land that's going to be covered with plants or rocks or water. Um, I would recommend doing that to speed up your renders. Another big thing um, that people always worry about is their atmosphere. Now, the atmosphere is probably what I would consider it the most important in view, and anybody would in the scene. You have to have a good atmosphere to have a good render. Um, it's not entirely true all the time, but atmosphere is key in most renders. What you want to do, I'll just load up one of my atmospheres I made, and um, we're going to go with this one. This is my newest one. It's not really called Default 1. I just haven't named it yet. And this one right here actually takes quite a bit of time to render um, because of the renders, uh, the settings I have on it. But what, I, what you would want to do otherwise is in the Atmosphere Editor, if you're using global illumination, it's still going to take a while to render. I mean, it's not going to take as long as global am global ambience or ambient occlusion, um, or even um, Google, uh, these two are actually pretty. These three right here are actually uh, pretty fast, and then these two right here are considered to be kind of slow. Um, but global illumination is really good for outdoor renders, and I would recommend using that if you're doing an outdoor scene. I would use global radiosity only in special occasions, maybe if I'm in a cave or I have water and I want the water light to be bouncing and hitting a stone wall or something. Um, but global illumination, it will work just fine. I know a lot of people say global radiosity is the way to go, but global illumination, ambient occlusion, global ambience, and even the standard lighting models will all work pretty well for you. Um, if you want more realistic renders in your outdoor scenes, I would use global illumination. But in here, this is kind of where um, everything will, like the render times will actually take their biggest toll on your scene. You have global illumination, and all these lighting models have the same options except for standard. It doesn't give you the quality boosts option, but they all have the quality boost option. 
right here, this is going to be the light boost, light quality boost right here. Um, most of the time, you actually don't even need this on none. You can actually take this down to about one, negative one. And that's not a lot, but that does speed up render times fairly well. And you can sometimes you can even go lower. Um, you're not going to notice too much of a difference in quality with this slider down. Um, maybe if you're using global radiosity, you would notice a bigger difference. Uh, but with global illumination, you're not. So let's let's make a small scene real fast, just uh, to give you an example. Um, and I'm also just to make this a little bit quicker. I'm going to take this down to negative six as well. I'll make it a little bit quicker and we'll just load up a couple of these just to get a small scene rolling in and we'll change the light so we have kind of a good light source coming in there All right. yeah, this is kind of a darker scene a darker atmosphere so there we go now I'll show you the differences here. With the light boost up to about none, we'll do a render. Make sure we're rendering the final quality, not preview. And we're going to render. You can see how it goes through its all pre pass stuff, and I'll pause the video while it's going through. All right, and as you can see here, it took a minute and 17 seconds to render out this scene. Um, that's with the quality boost for the light tab on none. And you can, if you pause the video and look, um, you can see that you know there's still some good quality in here. It's just a basic setup scene. You're not going to get a lot of good detail on the train itself, but um, the atmosphere itself is still looking fairly good. I mean, there's not a lot of grain going on, and the light quality is still pretty well off. Now, remember, it's a, mu a minute and 17 seconds, but if we go ahead and take the atmosphere tab up here and take this down to about 1.5 and then render it out one more time and see how much faster that prepass came up. And this render is going to go by a lot faster than it did before. Alright, as you can see, before it was a minute and 17 seconds. This is a minute and 13 seconds. The same scene, I mean, if you pause the video and look, there might be a little less degradation on the quality of the lighting, um, but not a lot that you can actually really see. So that's about a minute and 13 seconds at negative 1.5 on the quality boost in the atmosphere tab. And I also kept, for both of the renders, I kept that at 1.6. So <clears throat> that's another thing that you want to look into when you're doing your atmosphere that will actually speed up render times considerably um, with these turned down. Um, you really only need to have the quality boost up if you start to notice major patches in the light quality that are totally killing the scene. Um, same thing with the quality boost right here. You don't need this to be all the way up to 4 every time that you do a render. You should only raise this up as much as you need it to kill the grain or, or yeah, the grainy look, the grainy um, the grainy quality in the clouds and in light shafts and dust and everything like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't need to have this up at 4 every time. I default set them at 4 because some people really like them to be all the way up um, because they have really good computers and their computers can do it really quickly. They can render the scene out no matter how far the quality boost is up. So I always put it at 4 on my, on my atmospheres that I give out. But most of the time, you'd probably want to take those down to about, you know, in some cases, negative six. Um, I, I can show you, not negative 16, of course, but negative six. And I can show you here exactly what I mean with the quality boost set at negative 1.6. And then I'll show you what it looks like at maybe plus four and the quality in the, in, in the scene. So we're going to keep this at negative 1.5. And we'll keep this at negative 1.6. And I'll go ahead and render the scene out one more time. And we'll see.